Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM Marketing Network Lead customers build their businesses and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Mingles. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us live on Building Fortunes Radio. That's www.buildingfortunesradio.com. For all those people that might be somewhat unfamiliar with my voice, my name is Peter Mingles, and I decided that I wanted to do a radio show because we needed a bigger platform to be able to showcase and highlight and use as examples all the great people in home-based businesses because uh, unless we do, you all know. And when we started this, it was about six years ago. And I started to do the radio shows, of course, and started to select some people. And we were doing a radio show with Doris Wood over at the MLMIA, which stands for the Multilevel Marketing International Association. And a great guest speaker was kind of plugging in for Doris Wood. And her name was and still is Janine Avila. And it was really great when I was on the radio show with Janine because as she was telling her stories, and I'd never spoken to her before, um, I was nodding my head up and down like a bobblehead doll, like, you know, up and down, up and down, like, yeah, in agreement. Like, even though she might have used different names or different words or maybe slightly different stories, um, I kind of got it, and I realized that she did too. And as opposed to sometimes when I go to an event or used to go to an event or sometimes listen to a conference call webinar, I shake my head left to right. So left to right, like in disbelief, like I can't believe they're saying like, this is like, this doesn't work. Or, oh my gosh, they're steering people in the wrong direction. No wonder most people don't make it. I heard Dr. Charles King say one time, the biggest problem with network marketing is upline trains downline. And I started to think of that offensively. I said, wait a minute, I'm an upline. And then I looked around at the other people in the room and I said, well, they're uplines too. Now I know what you mean. <laughs> when, when upline trains downline... <laughs> <laughs> that could be a problem. So, so, so when I run across when I run across someone like Janine, I just have to share her wonderful experiences, her wit, her hard work, and her passion towards helping people build home-based businesses. And we we're doing lots of really cool things that she's helping us with as well. And I got a phone call from her recently. Says I want to go back on the air, and I said absolutely, let's do it. And here we are at Building Fortunes Radio. Now, if you go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine, you'll be able to find um, her previous radio shows. And the newest ones are up on top. So the oldest ones are down on the bottom or maybe even on the next pages. And uh, I just really enjoy having this radio show here with someone that is just really neat, special, um, and a great example for what it's like to build a home-based business. So, Janine, thanks for being here. Oh, Peter, thank you so much. I always just love hearing you talk about that. And uh, it, one of the things that, that you and I share that means a lot to me is we're both passionate about helping people work from home. And I believe it's largely because for both of us, it gave us the life we wanted. And I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that's kind of psychologically unemployable. Like I can work for a boss for a little while, but I really don't like asking other people if I can take a day off to go to a graduation or go to visit somebody in the hospital. I just want to do what I want to do. And in order to do that, there's a lot of people that like to do that kind of thing, but there's a price you pay um, by means you have to work. And I just wanted to talk tonight, the topic for tonight's show, Peter, is going to be 10 do's and don'ts for working from home. So it's just some easy little do's and don'ts, and I figured you and I could expand on them. But before we go into it, I just want to kind of set the table, if you will, with the fact that when I was building my business in the early 80s, and I had a lot of success, and I ended up on a panel, and, you know, sometimes you're going along doing things, and it's working, and you don't even really know specifically what you're doing that's working so well when you're new and kind of green like I was back then. And somebody asked me, you must be doing something different because I had broken all the records in a little company called Tupperware back in the day. I had promoted more people into rank positions than anybody in the history of the company. And they were coming after me and saying, what are you doing? You're doing something different. 
And I had to think about it. And then I said, well, I, you know, I had a wonderful mentor. Her name was Rosemary. And she said, what does a day look like for you? She wanted to like analyze and kind of take it apart. And I said, well, when, uh, when somebody tells, she said, what, uh, and she broke it down even more because I was promoting people into rank positions. And she said, they used to call it a promote out. When a promote out comes to you and says they want to promote, what's the first thing you do? Do you start setting goals? And I said, well, the first thing I do is I go to her home and I see, I say, where do you work? Because I found that a lot of people get distracted and they can't work from home successfully. So I guess that's when I, I understood it was like hands-on work experience. I was hearing people say, oh, I was going to do that, but I lost all the leads. I was going to do that, but I can't find my planner. I spent half the day. Like disorganization and procrastination, the twin sister, uh, they were holding people back. So I started studying, and myself included, I was having the same problem. I had all these kids at home, and I had never been taught how to work from home. I was just trying to do it. So to me, it was a missing training piece because people were sort of holding up the dream and saying, here's the money, and you can have freedom, and you can have this, and here's how you talk to people, and here's the product training, and here's this. But the very large component for me that was missing was home business training. So I just started doing it with my team. I'd say, okay, let me see where you work. And then I'd, okay, where can we set you up? And I found people were kind of a mess. They were all over the place. So that was something I did with everybody. And people started to have success because we were also putting a system in place. Here's where you keep all your leads when they come in. Here's where you do this. Here's where you, and I, I refined it over the years and got better and better. But as you know, I've had a fairly storied career in both corporate and in the field. And when I go into corporate, the first thing I do when I start working in training is teaching people how to work from home. Because to me, it's, it's the foundation. And it matters to me that people are successful and happy. And I, I actually really care about people's home life. And I don't want them to disrupt their home life and turn their home into something that it, it shouldn't be because your home should be your, your sanctuary, your, you know, your safe place from the, all the chaos and the stress of the outside world. So you can have it both ways if you set it up right. If you don't, there's no separation. And it just adds to a lot of stress. So that's just kind of a groundwork for what I'm going to say of the value of how important it is. And since we started this show, I had I just had this happen to me again today. I was at an event in Dallas, and uh, a, a gentleman named Michael Garcia, very successful, came up to me and said, you know, since I started listening to your show, he said, I set up a home office. And he said, I've never had that. And he's already very successful. But he said, I told my wife, you know, I think she's right. We need to do that because they've got, I think, six kids, and they have a very successful business, and they work from home. But he told me they started doing it, and he started noticing what a difference it made in the way they feel when they're at home. And that's very rewarding to me. So it kind of inspired me to want to talk about it a little bit more again tonight. But before I go through the 10 do's and don'ts, Peter, when you started working from home, were you a natural, or is that something you learned? Well, I always had the self-discipline of time management and understanding the activities that I had to do. The biggest problem that I had was the distraction of my wife and my yeah. kids, mostly my wife. See, she thought because I was home, I was available. And to, I hate to say it, I'll talk low. She still hasn't figured it out. Like, just, just, just because it's, been, it's like I don't think she'll ever get it. Like, if I'm home, that doesn't mean I'm available. Like if I'm if I'm on the phone, it might mean that I'm on the phone. So she just never got it. So, but the biggest distraction I think that I faced was the idea of I just have to work when I work. Now, by the way, that's why I wound up actually putting myself. I, I when I first started, I was mostly doing selling because that's really all I had to do, right? I had to hire, train, motivate, and develop people. So a sponsor, train, motivate, and develop people sounds a little bit like sales to me. So I would stand because I wanted the energy that would happen when I was standing. So I mm -hmm. took the, um, 
uh, workbench that I had built in the garage that was in the new home that, or newer home that I was in in Florida. And I started, I put a, a phone line in my garage. I was standing. It was perfect. The workbench just worked out fine. I could kind of move it over. I had all my papers. And then all of a sudden, it got hot. <laughs> and I couldn't find enough friggin' fans in, 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 in Florida. And it was like hot. Oh, my God. And that was when we had mosquitoes. Now, they kill the mosquitoes in Florida where we are now. So that's why we don't have any birds or butterflies anymore either. But the reality is, is that it was hot. Oh, my God. So I wound up actually having to move into a back bedroom of a home, uh, my home rather, and that's where I kind of created my little man cave. And, you know, depending on your style, you know, there's some people that like clutter, there's some people that don't like clutter, and everybody's got their own thing. But one of the biggest problems that I had back to your original question was my obstacles were I brought self-discipline to my home-based business based on what I previously did. But where I went was not self-disciplined. I had three young kids and I had a wife and she's like, I have to go to the store. So you watch the kids. Okay. I'm like, no, I can't watch the kids and have a um, conference call at the same time. Now, by the way, another thing that I adjust to, and I'm going to let you talk because it's your radio show was the idea of background noise. A lot of people would freak out if um, there were background noise, like dogs barking. Cause I had like, two dogs and sometimes three dogs and little kids and people running in and out and can't explain to kids what a door closed means, you know? So when I would have the background noise, you know, and then the mailman would come by and I would learn how to handle awkward moments in advance. You know, my favorite expression, always handle awkward moments in advance. So I started to think about it. I was like, wait a minute, what kind of background noise should you be hearing if I'm working from home? You should be hearing dogs barking and kids screaming and, you know, interruptions and blah, 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 and that's where I want to be, and that's probably also where they want to be too. So I kind of loosened up on the quote-unquote professionalism of trying to think that I had to have everything perfect. I'm like, screw that. I'm working from home. Hold on one second. My kid needs me to tie up his bathing suit. You know, we're on a conference call. Isn't this where you want to be? And um, that's kind of the adjustments I had to make. So some of them I had to kind of mentally make as well. But my biggest obstacles were the stuff that was the most important things to me at that time, still are. Back mm -hmm. to you. Well, and that's exactly what I would find people dealing with. And it's the, the distraction of, you know, you're going to sit down and you've set your goals and you want to make, you know, 37 phone calls and they're all listed and you're ready to go. And then, you know, your neighbor calls or your spouse walks in and it's like, hey, let's go eat. And it's like, oh. Because it's so easy. So it's it's that, and it's the background noise, the rules. And I like the way you turn something into a positive, like, hey, I work from home, um, just so you know. And obviously, you want to keep that under control, but you can't always. I've had it where I used to freak out. There's so many things you say. I remember one time I was doing a conference call, and the dog started barking. And I was like, oh, I was like in my head thinking, this is terrible. And then I was like, wait a minute. It is what it is. And, we're, and I thought I did just what you did. I said, I'm sorry, everybody. I work from home. I have a dog and he needs to go outside or he wants to be on the call. And everybody kind of laughed. And, and then, you know, you just, you don't, it's not as bad as we think it is sometimes. But the other thing I found is um, I, pre, I would always say, have the family council meeting. If you're going to start working from home, when you make this decision, and if you're listening to this show, you probably either already have or you have, have you had the meeting? Because when people tell me that somebody's upset with them at home because they're working and they wanted to do something, it's like you didn't have the meeting. So I would sit down with my family, sit everybody down and say, okay, I, this is what it means that I work from home. It means that I'm available and I start with the positive. I'm available to go to your field trips and to take you to soccer and to go get cupcakes for your class or all the things that it meant to them. It means I can make money because you guys want to go to Disneyland and that's not cheap. So what, what I need to do to do that is I have to work. So when you see me sitting over there in my desk and I have the phone up to my head, I'm working. I'm not just talking because a lot of times your family doesn't know the difference if you don't tell them and have the talk. You could just be talking on the phone like they do when they're talking on their phones. But when I'm talking on my phone, I'm working. They, my grandson said to me once, that phone's her moneymaker. Because he was watching me 
make phone calls and make my calls. So it can, communication is a very beautiful thing. So it's like saying, this is what this means. And when you guys cooperate and support me and don't talk to me when I'm on the phone, because for me, if I'm talking to Peter and he's telling me some details I need to know about the show, or you're talking to somebody about what the compensation is or something they need to know, and somebody comes up and starts saying, have you seen my baseball glove? So your attention goes off the listener and onto the person, and you, you're missing something. So it's just all part of, of ground rules and sort of rules of engagement. I'm working. This is what I need from you, and this is what you'll get. And it works very well. And the same thing with spouses and same thing with neighbors and aunts and cousins. And the other thing, and you, you brought it to mind when you were talking about, I'm the queen of signs. I have like really, and I do this at home and I've done it when I've been at my corporate job, but I have signs that say, you know, I hang them outside my door and I'm like recording, uh, you know, conference call, do not knock, do not come in here unless somebody's bleeding. And, you know, and I make them fun. I'm like, don't knock on this door unless you have pizza, you know, and I'm like, you know, with different things and, you know, do not disturb. I cannot be disturbed right now. Like if I'm doing a video Skype and I'm recording it, I can't have somebody banging on the door because then I got to start over and I don't like wasting time. And I've done that in my corporate jobs too. And, um, but the, in fact, it was funny, I came home. Uh, one day I was rushing in and I had to do a huge conference call. There was like over a thousand people on it. It was being recorded for later use at the corp. And, but I had to do it from home. So I went in and my daughter was there and I couldn't find my signs. And I said, I said, I have to record this as a thousand people. I said, make me a sign because the kids were all there because my mom was in town and I had to get this done so I could go out and relax. So she makes me a sign and I go in and I do the call. And when I came out, I saw the sign that she had hung on the outside of the door. And it said, do not disturb or else. And then it said, thank you. <laughs> Such a funny sign, you know, it's like, or else. Because she was used to that with me in the early days. Um, but anyway, that's just sort of a few anecdotes and stories. Um, you want to go to a, a quick break, and then we'll come back with the, the 10 do's and don'ts of working from home. Absolutely. We'll be right back. And you're listening to Janine Abava. Go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Building Fortunes Radio. If you sell a product or service, then you should check out PMMarketingsNetworkLeads.com. Just visit www.networklead.com. For over 18 years, PM Marketing has helped distributors build their home-based businesses through lead generation, website development, automated email delivery systems, and sales training. If you're looking for a way to increase your skills and increase the number of people that see your product or opportunity, NetworkLeads.com can help. To learn more, visit www.NetworkLeads.com. Ask about their lead management system, capture pages, personalized websites, MLM training, humongous blogs, the humongous classified ad network, Building Fortunes Radio, or their webinar schedule. NetworkLeads.com can be your one-stop shop for everything you need. And now, back to our show. And we are back. Peter Mingles here uh, working with Janine Avalon. We talk about the 10 do's and don'ts. I just want to throw something in. And Janine, if we go a little bit late, that's okay. We can go over time. Um, I just want to throw two things in uh, that might be helpful at this point. Um, I was supposed to be a doctor, so I got to I got to do this as a doctor. There's two drugs that I make and sell. So you ready? There's two drugs that I make and sell. One is called Ahamia, A-H-A-M-I-A. It's called Always Handle Awkward Moments in Advance. So hamia sounds like a drug. So so it's yeah, hamia. It does. So so the reason why I say that is because you know when there's an awkward moment, think of how you might have been able to handle it in advance. So like you said, the signs or maybe a gate or whatever or whatever whatever. So it's your house, you know your situation. Hamia. The other one is idia, I D I A. So that's another drug. Now by the way, you're allowed to overdose on this one. It's called idia. I did it anyway. I did it anyway. So oh. there's my, <laughs> there we go. So you're allowed to overdose on that one. Take a couple every day, right? Probably need to have one yeah. sitting by the phone. So idia. So there's two drugs, That's Ahamia it. and idia. There you go. I like that. And that do it anyway, That's that is really great. Really great. So, okay. The 10 do's and don'ts from working from home. One is I've kind of hammered on this. 
ad nauseum, but I have to say it again. Separate your work from your living room, uh, your, your living area. Like, don't put your office in the living room. Now, I'm going to make a small sidebar. In my case, I live by myself. I live alone. And what I did, I just recently moved. I was sharing this with Peter before the show started. My living room is my home office because I wanted more space because I've been expanding and I want to do some things with the show. And I, so I've been setting my, uh, my office up to look more like a set. Like I bought an old fashioned popcorn machine because I'm in here. This is where I live, you know, is in here. And I set my bedroom up more like a living room. So, but what I'm not doing is taking away the living area from the family because they're all grown and gone. I did all that already. So I'm just uh, having fun and at, I'm going to start posting some pictures on Facebook. Uh, I just moved last week. And so as soon as I get it all settled up, but my home office is like, I got the flat screen TV. I got the old fashioned popcorn machine. It smells like, but it's fun. I'm going to, it's going to be the most fun you can have working from home. So I'm setting my environment that, you know, like I tell everybody, an environment where I, I'm happy and relaxed and want to work. But so if you have a family around you, don't take over the living room with your office. Um, now, this is just something I do, and I know Peter does it because we've had a conversation, but I highly recommend you have a separate telephone line um, for your business. And you can have two cell phones. And I, there's a lot of things you can do. You can do Ring Central. You can do Vonage Number, like Google Voice. There's a lot of stuff. So it's not about how to do that. But what I've noticed, and again, this is about peace and profitability and your stress level. When, when I, have one, I have one phone that's strictly business. And, you know, people have that number. But that's the phone that when I'm working, as all my clients get that, because things have changed since there was the landline, which I still have one, and, um, and the cell phone. But now people want to text. It's efficient. If you're on a conference call or a meeting and your client can text you, that's efficient and better. But what I also noticed is that I never had any peace from work because if the phone rings, I'm looking at it. And... Some people would say, well, just don't look at it. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm going to do because it could be my kids, my family. I have an aging parent, and there's just, I need this, I need to look. That's how I am. But you can't unsee, I can't unsee it. So if somebody says, hey, I need to talk to you, I, I'm, I'm going to be distracted from my visit with my family or whatever I'm doing. So I, I have separated those two. And it's really like slightly inconvenient because I'm carrying around two cell phones and that's how I like to do it. Some people have one private number that, you know, their cell phone and then they, they use Google voice or ring. Peter probably has some ideas about that. Um, but I definitely think you should have two numbers. So in the old days, I used to say, train your kids how to answer the phone if they're going to be answering the phone, but now everybody has a cell phone. So I don't really have to say that. Uh, Peter, did you have anything you wanted to throw in on that separate line thing yeah, or actually, different opinion? Actually, only because, yeah, I could spend some time on that, but the, I think we could do that on another call because you have nine more things or eight more things you want to go through. Okay. But you know, yeah, that separate line is, yeah, that separate line is really important. And there's some creative things that we can do. That's why maybe we come back and we do this like an expanded version of a couple of them on okay. future weeks. I'd like, I, you know what? We could really do that because there's so much. So I'll I'll go down them. And then um, we'll pick a couple of them, Peter, and we'll come back and really expand the show so that we can give some real how-tos. So here's another one. Um, don't be overly cute on your voicemail messages, um, and, you know, unless you're in a jingle business. But some people have really long messages or you call and it's their business and you their messages are saying, you know, uh, just like really long sayings and things and people are just busy these days. So it's just a little advice is to be efficient and sound professional on your message. And that's a challenge when you're working from home because sometimes people won't take you seriously, but you can handle a lot of these things with your professional behavior. And I like to have fun as much as the next guy, but I would just be very careful with your messages. Um, okay. So that is, uh, two, 
three, be upbeat when you answer your phone and answer your phone. A lot of people have a habit of letting it go to voicemail and texting. When you're in business, you got to be available. You need to answer the phone and you need to sound positive. And if you answer the phone and, you know, if Peter calls me, I have a thing called, you know, caller ID and I can say, hi, Peter. I know who it is. So it's a habit to just say hello. But you can make people feel greeted and valued when you say their name and you know why they're calling. And you just want to be a bright spot that somebody can call and you know that you sound like you're in business, you want their business, and you're responsive. A lot of people never answer their phone, and then they're, they're just calling back when they can. And it's a different attitude when you're in business, so you want to be careful for that. This is another part of three is the, on the telephone manner is don't wait for your phone to ring when you're in business. You know, you don't sit back and, and, you know, you put some flyers out or you ran some Facebook ads or you did something. Now we're going to wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> in your downtime, in between, you make calls outbound and market your business. Let people know you're in business. You just do some, you know, advertising. Let, there's probably... For everybody listening to the show, I guarantee you there's people you know that do not know about your business. So that's the time to make some calls and let them know. Hey, I just wanted to let you know I started a, you know, a, a real estate or I, I've got an event planning business or I'm in a direct selling company. I'm marketing a certain product. Whatever it is, let people know. And if you or somebody you know is interested, I just wanted to let you know I'm doing this now. And, and it's just, it's marketing and it's, it's promoting your own business. And that's a super important part of the business. Here comes a tough one for some people. Number four, set goals every day and then work those first. Like whatever your goals are, I'm going to make, you know, 20 phone calls before I go to the gym or whatever it is. I, I work in a series of goals all the time. I'm always telling myself I'm going to do one more of these or I, I'm going to get these goals set. And, you know, we talked a lot on some of the earlier shows about planning, but it's very important that you know what you're going to do because you'll flounder working from home if you don't. So if you're saying, I'm going to market my business, I'm going to, you know, see where the meetups are, I'm going to take a class, I'm going to learn how to use, you know, uh, Facebook ads, whatever it is, those are your goals. So you can set like monetary goals, like you're selling a product and you're going to generate a certain amount of income from your goals. That's good. But when I'm talking, to, I'm talking about action goals, things to keep you on track and organized. Um, also, you want to separate the important from the urgent, like things that have to get done that's going to cost you money or cause a relationship problem or damage you in some way. They have to get done. So you want to set those aside and work on things that are important, but not just the activities that are fun for you. And for a lot of people working from home, that's a challenge. So, you know, we I can do a whole show on that also. So um, five, um, value your time. Uh, your time is your life. So that's another thing we talk about, like having the meeting. So people don't just, I'm not trying to pick on your wife. Peter, but people really <laughs> think their family thinks because you're home that you're available. And, and that can be neighbors that, Hey, can you pick up my, and there's, it's fun to be able to be available and do that stuff, but you just have to keep control over it and don't let it get in, in the way of your goals. Cause working from home requires a lot of communication with friends and family. And another part about your time is don't work morning, noon, and night because you'll burn yourself out. The beauty of working from home and being your own boss, BYOB, be your own boss, that's what it means in my life, um, is that I can design my hours. So I don't have to get up and do the eight to five. I can say, you know what, in the morning, I don't want to work. I want to go play with my grandkids, or I want to go to the gym, or I want to take a yoga class, or I want to go for a walk, or I want to watch a movie. I can decide that, and I, I will monitor that by my stress level. And then if I want to work in the evening or I want to take a break, but it's tempting sometimes to just work nonstop because the work is there. So you just have to monitor that and you know yourself. So um, that's something that's pretty, pretty important because you want to stay fresh and happy. So number six, 
um, and we'll go into a more detail on this, but setting up organized files and retrieval systems so that if you're marketing a product and you've got product information files or customer lead files or, or distributor application forms or things, because I know everybody does things online, but a lot of times you need a hard copy when you're explaining things. So you just need to have a retrieval system where you can easily get your hands on things. Uh, Irma Bombeck said once, if I only had back the time in my life I spent looking for things. And when you think about it, we do spend a lot of time looking for things if we're disorganized. So you just don't wanna let your paperwork to get out of control. So you, you can learn about that and we've done some shows on that and we can do some more because it's always a work in progress. Uh, number seven, get furniture that's the right size for your home office. And it's you can do a lot of things, but it's usually a little smaller than standard. But this is an area where you want to put some thought into. And if you don't have a lot of money to invest in a good desk, there's so many things now. You can go on OfferUp and, you know, all these different things that are online where you can buy things. And certainly Ikea and places like that. But you can find, looking at pictures and with the way – you know, you can shop for things. Get something that suits you. Like I was talking to a friend the other day because I was getting a new desk, and he said, well, I have a desk, and he knows me very well, and he said, but you won't like it because you like those L-shaped things with drawers because that's the way my desk has to be. I need an L-shaped desk with drawers. That's what I like. He likes more of a table thing. He doesn't care if it has drawers or not because he's just more going to work on his laptop. But whatever – your style is. I was getting a visual when Peter was talking about his workbench um, that he could stand up and and do all that from the standing position because it is important to have energy and and to be able to have a flow when you're talking on the phone and what's comfortable for you and so you're not just sitting at a desk all day. So it might be a matter of finding they you they IKEA and a lot of places sell these desks now that I think on the first show I was in Justin Boyd's office and he has a desk that you push a button it goes up to stand up height or drops back down there's just a lot of fun things you can do so this is like a really fun part but you're setting it up for you and that's what's most important that you get what you like and I love to tell the story about the the lady once that didn't we didn't have she had no space for a desk and I mean she literally had no space so we set her up on an ironing board and she worked up that ironing board for six months before she got a desk and she loved it because it was stand up height and she could fold it and put it away. But when she had to make her calls and do things, she pulled that desk out and that's where she worked. So you can just be creative. And that's, that's probably the secret is being creative and allowing yourself to set up something that you like. Okay, so that was number seven. Number eight, save time by using like apps and the right services. And this is something, there's so many great apps. I use an app called Orderly um, that for all of my list of I things that I to do, and I learned how to use that, and it's very helpful to, to me. I also learned how to organize my phone better. So I've got files, like sometimes people look at my phone and they're like, wow, that's frightening. But I have like the things I do every day, my, all my accounts in one folder and my phone, because I work off of it so much is my, that's my brain to my business right now. So I have to have that organized because I don't like to be scrolling all around looking for things, but use, there's no reason to be like writing checks or paying bills yourself. You can use your bank services for that. I mean, if you're completely against that, but it's a huge time saver and it saves a lot of money. Um, the next thing, uh, I, we're still on number eight, is keep receipts, invoices, checks. If you guys could see my home office right now, I have a little bin that's right by the front door and it's right by where my purse goes and I clean all the receipts out of my purse at least once every two or three days, out of my wallet, out of my purse. I've also learned a lot of receipts I don't have to keep like I used to in the old days. Now they can, you can pull them up, you can scan them. There's a lot of things you can do. But for things you have to keep track of, you just have a system in place. You have a bin for that so that when you come in and you throw the receipts in there, 
um, I just got came back from an event and I have a ticket for the valet that I had to pay $22 for. So that goes right in the receipt bin so I can keep track of that when I organize it. Um, so that's eight, number nine. This is a matter of personal preference, but dress in a way that will help you work productively. So some people, and this is very different for each person, and I've learned this over the years, is like, for me, I like to be comfortable, but I have to be dressed and ready to work. Because I don't know if I might need to run out the door. And I find if I, this is just me, you guys, I find if I sit around in sweats or in my pajamas, a lot of people like to like brag and say, I don't have, and it, it's what they like. I can stay in my pajamas all day. So if you can be productive in your pajamas and you feel like you're going to work and be professional and sound professional and you can pull that off, that's what you should do. For me, I notice if I, you know, pull my hair back, put a little makeup on, get dressed. Plus, I never know if I'm going to end up on a Zoom or a FaceTime. So I like to be ready for that too. But make yourself comfortable into what the most productive attire for you is. And that's a personal decision, but it's just something that has to be thought about because it can make a difference. And then finally, number 10 um, is you have an attitude of profitability when you're working from home that it's your business and not your home when you're in that mo and when you're in that moment. So you want to have like I've seen some people clutter their desk area so much with all their kids' personal items. Like people do that at work in their cubicle or their office because they're trying to have a feeling of home because they're not there. So they want to have all these pictures and kids' homework and things like that. And I love looking at that stuff. I'm one of these people that the front of my refrigerator got all these pictures and cards and things that kids have, because I'm very sentimental. And a lot of people can't stand to have the side of that stuff on the refrigerator. I like it. But in your workspace, you have a bulletin board or you have a, a you know, a, a whiteboard there. And that's not a place, like my kids and grandkids know you don't write on grandma's whiteboard because that's for work. And there's another little whiteboard that's for them, but they're not writing on the one where I have my goals and the things I have to do. And God forbid, Peter, they should ever erase my whiteboard. <laughs> They've like learned the hard way, right? Probably everybody that's listening to this show has had something on a whiteboard that somebody erased. I will never forget the time. I had all these goals and I spent a lot of time mapping out this great big whiteboard. I came in one day and it was erased. And there was drawings and things up there. And I was like, who did this? <laughs> so anyway, I didn't plan for my awkward moment in advance because that was before I said, do not ever erase my whiteboard. <laughs> so these are all things you learn from working from home that can make your work better, more peaceful, and more profitable. So those are 10 do's and don'ts. And I know we're just a little over, but I wanted to, Peter, if you have any feedback there, and I do think we should expand on a couple of these shows on those points, because we can really give people some really good ideas. Absolutely. Well, all the stuff you said is excellent. So I, I'm just enjoying listening and um, enjoying taking notes as well. So what was, I, I got down to number 10. I wasn't sure how to call that. So what are we going to call number 10 again? Um, that's, let's see what I that, wrote. Here. That's where you put, like, you know, don't put the kitty stuff on your, keep your cubicle clean kind of a thing. Oh, that's keeping an attitude of profitability from working from Got home. It. Got it. That's keeping, uh, I have a friend named GJ, and he always, well, a lot of people say this, but he always says, keep the main thing the main thing. So, and I guess that's why you don't put your desk in the living room and take over the workspace in the living room, because then your family's resenting you working from home, which is the opposite of what we want. So if, if the living room is the entertainment center and that's our, our little relaxation center for the family, we keep the, that's the main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing. So when you're a work area, the main thing is profitability and marketing and promoting and clients. And you don't want to be, oh, look, it's all cluttered now with all this sentimental stuff. Just keep it separate. And that will help you keep your attitude focused. Like if your goal is to get a bigger house, get a better home office, get a new car. Those are the things 
that go on the board so that you're visualizing. I mean, we can do a whole section on, on dream boards and vision boards, but that's the stuff that drives you when you don't feel like making your calls. I put motivational things up that re- help me keep going and help me to keep doing it anyway and doing the things I need to do so that I can have the life I want so I can get on an airplane and go to a graduation or show up where I need to be and have, you know, a great life, the life I really want. Excellent. So those are okay. two things, and there's a lot there. And we're going to come back, and I want to exp- – this is going to be a little bit on the fun side. So we'll be able to give different people different exp- uh, um, perspectives and examples on all of these things. Because I was listening to you as you were talking, and I was like, oh, wow, this is really kind of cool. So I can kind of explain for some people how I do it, maybe for some people how you do it, and then you can see the differences and the similarities. Mm-hmm. So great stuff. Like I live in Florida, so I get negative if I have to put on socks. Like I'm <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that would be different if you lived in like South Dakota, where like you know socks are frostbite. So it's kind of neat right. the way you can you have to kind of adapt to the environment that you're in too, um, because it's really different and, and there's different you know different things and different obstacles. So we can kind of explore some of those things so we can kind of handle it in advance for some people so they see what's going on. Like for instance, in my little back office. Um, it roasts, roasts during the summer because it's where the it's where the sun hits on this wall over here in the morning, on this wall over there in the evening or the afternoon, and it gets hot. Oh my gosh. I could be in it could be ninety, ninety five sometimes in my office. So when you're talking about like, oh my gosh, you know, what kind of fans do you have? What have I done? What other kind of creative things have I tried? Blah, blah, blah. You know, how do I rearrange the uh, air conditioning in the house so maybe a little bit more comes over here? Do I put a separate uh, air conditioner in the window? All those little types of things are important because I found that I was falling asleep. So what happened with me when in my garage, it was getting hot. In my back office, in the summer months, no matter what I do, sometimes it's hotter than usual. It's It's hard to work in a hot environment, especially if you're, you know, trying to keep your energy level up and all that sort of stuff as well. So just all cool things that you can probably learn and some tricks of the trade to go along with that. It is. And as you probably experienced, I've done that. It's like, it's hot. I need a fan. I go buy a fan. I plug it in and it's so loud. Now I can't be on the phone because I can't hear. So I have to keep turning the fan off or it's blowing my papers all around the desk. So you have to figure out, do I want an oscillating fan? And it's just, they're, they're little things, but they're not. Because they go back to setting up this environment where you're comfortable and you're happy. And then that leads to a more positive experience in your business. So yeah, those are super important. Some little teeny weeny things can make a huge difference as far as a lot of stuff. So we could talk about that as well. So, you know, we have a we like I said, we could probably spend a whole entire 30 minute show on any one of these things. So for those people listening in, make sure you check us out. Go to buildingfortunesradio.com forward slash Janine. And Janine, how do they find you as well? Because I know you have your own website. Uh, they can go to janineavila.com. It's J-A-N-I-N-E-A-V-I-L-A. Janineavila.com. And there's a contact button there. And you can go in there. You can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, it's called Home Base. And it's this is your base that you're working from home. So it's full of tips and ideas. And you can sign up for that newsletter. It's free. And I never, never, never sell my email list. I don't give it away. I don't lend it out. I don't anything. I I cannot stand it when I sign up for something and I get a whole ton of junk right afterwards. So that never happens. But I would also, if you want to just go there, if you have a question, an idea for the show, or you want to send pictures, you can email me, Janine, at JanineAvila.com. And it'll come to me, and I will respond. But I love, love, love seeing creative ideas of things people are doing from home. And I'd be very interested to hear your story. So I appreciate everyone who got on the show. And Peter, I'll let you close it out. Yep, we'll be right back. We'll see everybody next week. And we do this on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 
p.m. Central Time. And when you go to buildingfortressradio.com forward slash Janine, you'll see the shows and the ability to share it with other people as well. So share with some friends. We'll catch you next week. Thanks, everyone. You've been listening to Building Fortunes Radio on buildingfortunesradio.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for the designated Building Fortunes Radio segment with Peter Mingle. Be sure to check out the buildingfortunesradio.com website for our featured segments. It's been our privilege to have you listen in. At Building Fortunes Radio, we wish you the success you deserve and are willing to work for. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. 